Hi, this is Rev Ed with today's Back Porch Devotional from Psalm 17, verses 1 through 15. Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer from lips free of deceit. From your presence let my vindication come. Let your eyes behold the right. You have tried my heart. You have tested me by night. You have visited me and you will find nothing. I have purposed that my mouth will not transgress. With regard to the works of man, by the word of your lips, I have avoided the ways of the violent. My steps have held fast to your paths. My feet have not slipped. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me. Hear my words. Wondrously show your steadfast love. O Savior of those who seek refuge from their adversaries at your right hand, keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who do me violence, my deadly enemies who surround me. They close their hearts to pity. With their mouths they speak arrogantly. They have now surrounded our steps, and they set their eyes to cast us to the ground. He is like a lion eager to tear, as a young lion lurking in ambush. Arise, O Lord, confront him, subdue him, deliver my soul from the wicked by your sword, from men by your hand, O Lord, from men of the world whose portion is in this life. As for your treasured ones, you have filled their womb with children, and they leave their abundance to their infants. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness, and when I awake, I shall be satisfied with your likeness. This is a Psalm of David, and it's simply entitled, A Prayer. And he is praying again for deliverance from his enemies. If there's one thing that David had to deal with virtually all his life, it was opposition. First from Saul, and then from the enemies of Israel as he served as king, and finally, near the end of his life, enemies within his own family. David spent a large portion of his life dealing with people who were trying to do him in. And this is simply a prayer to the God David trusts for deliverance, for shelter, and for refuge. David has been attacked in some way, and it's not specified here, which is why it is worthwhile for us to use as a prayer in any of our situations when we feel unfairly attacked. And he says, you know, you have tried my heart, you have visited me by night, you have tested me and you will find nothing. This doesn't mean that David thinks that he was perfect, but in this particular instance, he feels like he is in the right, but he is willing, he is willing to let God's judgment be just. He says, from your presence, let my vindication come. Let your eyes behold the right. He is willing to put his case in the hands of the Lord. He says, my steps have fell fast to your path. My feet have not slipped. He has strived to follow what God has called him to do. He says, I call upon you for your answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my words. Wondrously show your steadfast love. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. This is just a beautiful prayer for deliverance and protection. And it is absolutely right for us to seek God's deliverance when we are under attack. We need to make sure that when we are being attacked, that we are indeed innocent in whatever matter it is that is before us. We all know that none of us are perfect. And sometimes people confront us with things that we've done that we really need to own up to. But this is a case where David truly believes that he has done nothing wrong, that he's been unjustly attacked, and that his enemies are prowling around like lions trying to devour him. Deliver my soul from the wicked by your sword, from men by your hand, O Lord, from men of the world whose portion is in this life. He makes a point of referencing the fact that David's heart is not set on the things of this world. It is set on God and his righteousness, his vindication, his saving love. The people who are of this world seek to destroy others. They want to tear folks down. They want to make as much out of this life as possible. 
because they don't believe there's anything to the next life. But David says, as for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. And when I awake, I shall be satisfied with your likeness. David trusts that one day he will see the face of the Lord in pure righteousness. And when he says, when I awake, there is an implication here, just a hint at a belief in the resurrection at the end of all things. When I awake, I shall be satisfied with your likeness. David fully expects that one day he will see the Lord face to face, that his shelter will be complete and that he will have no more enemies to contend with. And it is this confidence that gives him hope and courage in the middle of whatever it is that he is facing. So we too can have the same confidence. If we belong to God in Christ, we know that he is our defender and our protector. And even when we feel like our enemies or the situations of our life are running roughshod over us and there does not appear to be any relief, we know that God is with us. God has not promised to spare us from trouble, but he has promised to be with us through it and to redeem us out of it. Jesus said, in the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Know that the Lord considers you as the apple of his eye, that you are free to seek shelter under his wings, that he is your savior and your Lord and your deliverer, and that we too can have the same expectation as David, that one of these days we will behold the Lord face to face in a place where there is no harm, no sorrow, no tears, and no pain anymore. Let that sustain you this day and turn your troubles over to the Lord, who is your protector and your defender, the one who loves you with a greater love than any other. Know that the Lord is with you through whatever you are facing. God's blessings be upon you this day.